as always, the story with Ronan is can he break at a level that he can be competitive. It's always been the weakness of his game. Immediately starts. You can see the difference, you know, between the players we were watching yesterday, even with a cut break compared to the front ball. It isn't quite the same level of power for Ronan, but hand on the table, he's incredible and it's a case of giving himself enough chances to uh, to win these matches. I think we will see I think highly likely that we're going to see Josh break at a slightly higher level. Fairly smooth progress yesterday for, for Josh. He was in pretty good form. 10-1 victory over Ben Manship in his first match. And I think it was 10-4 in his second match it was over Jez Graham. So 20 frames won, just the five dropped so far for Josh. And very smooth progress yesterday. And that's how the all the players that are in, in action right now, because we've got the whole of the winners round two, essentially third round of the tournament in action right now across our 16 tables. They've all come through by winning two matches and that smooth progress. Whereas we saw so many players have to go into that loser side and win plenty of matches. Disappointment for Josh on that one. Didn't quite open up as he was looking to do and all of a sudden this chance looks like it's not going to work out for him. That was full blooded from full blooded from Josh. But it's not the worst result for him. It sits over the pocket, but not exactly hanging on in there for an easy combination shot. I think Ronan's still gonna play the loss of turn though. Can he squeeze this cue ball behind the yellow? I think that'll be the plan. Probably good enough. Oh, there's a sort of a, a weirdly tough situation there with that last one from Josh. It's a good example of, well, you're trying to pot it, but if you don't pot it, you want to make it a bit, a bit smelly. It's quite a, it's a very fine <laughs> balance to hit. You almost have to miss it by more to achieve that. Oh, some recovery though from the killer. Yeah, and he's got the angle. It's not just the pot here. He's got the angle on the red to bottom left to deal with his problem on the right as well. Excellent shot. This has to be precise though. There's no real use to him flying into them. It's going to be particular. not come out nicely. It was still a tough shot. A nod from <laughs> Josh Kane, shake of the head. Long, long way to go in this match yet, but early frames can still be key. You can see the red which helps, so you can help make Ronan's life a little trickier. He'd have loved and loved, loved, loved for that red to go. Just 
Josh's so that if Ronan were to make a mistake, Josh Kane was perfectly poised to come in and, and mop up. There's a little bit more insurance on this clearance here for Ronan. Almost caught out by the shot clock there. I do think it might be a little bit of a of a transition for, for Ronan in particular. He's certainly out there on the outside arena tables, what you'd consider one of the slower players. Perfectly comfortable with taking his time and playing his own game. Whereas I'm gonna chat with a couple of the players yesterday out in the bar that actually the general speed, the average shot clock on all of our ultimate pool professionals has decreased, I think, in some instances by minutes. It's it's remarkable, you know, got, obviously got the outside tables, it's a great shot from Josh to make that. What are we thinking, cock tap, yeah, he's looking at left middle here. Left middle, yeah, the two cushions, I mean this is some effort he's going for here, it's, I mean, and this is where Ronan's so good he sat there happy as you like he's he's happy you know if josh gets out here he'll still be you know <laughs> he's expecting to get the table but if josh wants to take on low percentages he'll be very happy yeah this is a big shot to try and pull out not quite it's a good Actually, effort the first shot was fantastic yeah it's just tough isn't it it just didn't come out for him so had to Kind of come up with something, didn't, and now Ronan's got just a wide open table to get off to a nice start here. Yeah, but just to my point about the about the players and, and, and their shot speed, I think Ronan's one of the few that's probably stayed pretty consistent and actually has the sort of the toughest adaptation, if you like, to arena conditions because it's so different to his to his outside game. But you know, we, we see matches fly through now. And I spoke to a couple of the players about it, and they said, "Yeah, I, I've even noticed in myself that you know, I play so much quicker than I used to." Yeah, I think it's a very valid point. Put it to them that if Ultimate Pool tried to run the British Open in its current format back when Ultimate Pool first started, we'd have been here till Thursday. Yeah. I think the four. I think the the. the changes for this event have been fantastic I think this has been a great addition to the calendar I really like the the open nature of it we're getting to see potential storylines we've got some good juniors in the field we've got great qualifiers coming through and we've got longer races as well which is a nice change but also they're not too long you know it's it's a really nice balance Ronan's worked very hard all the way through this to keep the yellow over right centre as his last ball. Actually, probably a little bit awkward on that one. Yeah, just just had to make sure we pop that absolutely in the centre. He could have gone a little bit close to the yellow. Lovely finish from Ronan. Most to be expected. Those are the types of finishes that he is just never ever going to struggle with his patterns are too pristine for that 1-0 to the babe
Smooth stuff from Ronan again. He is so clinical. Hand on the table. Loved his shot to develop the yellow bottom right. Shepherded by the two reds. Very, very tidy indeed. Looks sharp, does Ronan? Looks very nice. You know, he's now, not that he's going through emotions, but it's not as, you know, I as think, important to him. Yeah, he, he's probably not got the fire. Yes, that's, that's the right way of putting that's it. That's probably yeah. what you'd say. But still certainly competitive, certainly enjoying it. I mean, I saw his Instagram post at the airport on the way over here. He's still having a great time travelling. Well, that's uh, it. I mean, he's... more than Irish buddies. He's, he's, he's enjoying life. Well, there is a very very much a social side to the sport and he, he very much enjoys that side of it and you know whether he wins another match or another tournament he's had an amazing career and, and I think he's, he's very proud of that quite rightly still perfectly able to compete though in another sort of scrappy break but this is this is the Ronan McCarthy MO it's actually a slightly lesser spotted Ronan McCarthy bit of crash bang wallop I'm going to try to re-break them he's having a little look here see if the yellow will go maybe off the cushion of the yellow or just direct off the yellow I think it's far enough away to go direct off the yellow Poor, he almost missed that one that would have been a, a jarring one then trips up over the table come on Ronan I know it's still early, but... Yeah, his issue is, if he goes direct, it's quite a light feather. And does that move the yellow far enough away from the red? Yeah, I'm not sure that was sort of as easy as Ronan's willingness to take it on maybe indicated because that was the pace that he needed to hit the yellow but to hit it that hard the angle just wasn't really there no tough shot he got himself in a poor poor position it's not that easy here for Josh he's not left anything nice on he's had a little bit of a result Extension. Extension yeah, I think Ronan was pretty confident the only red he could leave was the one that he was releasing at the top of the table is it the plan? Shot. That's somebody queuing. Yeah, he had full blooded had to go for that. That was the frame over if he missed at that plant. Excellent. And it couldn't have come out better. It's perfect control as well as making a great plant. Just needs to mind his work on this red. That's nice. Bumps the yellow away and now things completely wide open. Josh Kane you'll be pleased to get on a little bit of a of a winning run again got through 10-1 in the first round against Ben Manship and 10-4 against Jen, Jez Graham in winners round one Safe to say this is his toughest test so far in the tournament. All due respect to those two players. through the gap there are the two yellows this is a lovely finish from Josh Kane and you know Ronan I think will still feel as he probably should that he's not really done much wrong in that visit it was a tough visit went for it with a shot that knew wouldn't leave much but Josh Kane to rifle in that long plant followed by a very tidy run out will just settle him down I think and he'll feel like he's in the match at now, longer he goes with that zero next to his name, the harder and harder it gets to to get into the match. John Rowe four, Jack Whelan one. 
Rob Warren's flying, he's falling up on Dylan Leary. Carl Sutton falling up on Matty Challen. Well, we're in for some fun and games here. While you run through the scores, we might have some time to do just that because this could be a very drawn out frame. This, let's mark down the time 53 48 as that uh, cue ball stop then. This one has the potential. Eight ball over the pocket, number of balls down there. This could be the longest frame in the tournament. Almost could have the potential for this to be the longest frame in Ultimate Pool history, <laughs> in all honesty. It's, especially when you consider who's at the table. Well, absolutely. He's not going to run out of patience. And actually, while we, while we reference that, Josh Kane co-shares the record for <laughs> the longest frame in, in Ultimate Pool history. He's, uh, he was involved with, with Brian Halcrow. In a, I think it was a 22 and a half minute frame in the Players' Championship earlier on, or earlier on last year, in uh, 2023 rather, 2024. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, match. This frame started at 54 minutes on the match clock. Josh Kane's got a smile on his face because <laughs> he he knows he's in for a, a long haul here. Get the cushion out on that chair. <laughs> oh dear. So Josh Kane's going to pot. And I don't mind that. It's just a case of assigning colours. It's so difficult to have a tactical exchange with open table. A lot of players prefer just to. Well, is Josh going here? Can you squeeze this yellow below? Yellow the squeezes ball? in. So actually, if the yellow eight ball pops out the way, no. I don't know if he was trying to make that. Actually, the pace he played it at. How does he open up the pocket? It's an interesting one. I mean, he's st maybe he's trying to stay on the one to right centre because then he can deal with the rest. But if the eight ball doesn't get away from the pocket, then you've got two yellows that are dead down there. Well, I just the, the one above the eight ball, more so close to the left rail, that definitely sneaks in. But does the one sort of what well, just to the right of the eight ball sneak in? If the one above the eight ball can go cushion eight and in, and you have to get pretty deep into it, I think. Because I think if you play cushion into it, it would hit the near jaw and stay up but if that shot is available it opens up the other yellow so actually you can see how it looks from there yeah he's trying to get across to be able to play that shot is he on it that's the break again this is why we are where we are yeah I'm just interested to see oh yeah we did just get the three point rule it's just amazing to see that many balls in the bottom half of the table but we did have the three go past that centre line Yeah, complete slug rack. Let's uh, even move. This is the shot. Yeah, that's the problem. You cushion into it, it's always going to hit that jaw. I think the only way to squeeze that is to get actually a little bit further into it. Had that have dropped, obviously, he then can make the finish. But Ronan now has control of this frame. Plays a loss of turn. go blocks the eight ball and he tried to play the loss of turn in such a way where he wasn't leaving an immediate loss of turn back now it may be a loss of turn back if he can play yellow onto eight ball but I don't know if that helps him because the, the reds would all be open and he's not really covering anything so it's tough I think he may have to just try and go here and play the development on the eight ball I think the yellow passes to bottom left and the other yellows go so not the best of shots for Ronan really still needed that bottom corner to be tied up No good, but actually, I don't think he'd take this outcome. He would have not wanted to see the red do that, but it's a fairly routine combination shot, and he can get onto the eight ball from it, so it looks a disastrous outcome. It, it really isn't. Yeah, fair play. It's a safety error from Ronan McCarthy. 
Well, that's only half the story. It's a, an excellent out from Josh Kane, and we're all square. It's now not the best of... You can just hear the... It's not the strike. Just don't explode that well for him. Obviously, the last frame was a poor one for Josh as well. Very intriguing start to this match. Both players have reached the two frame mark and a long, long way to go in it. So just the early jousting. Can either of these players kind of get a rhythm going and really start to run a few on the trot? Kind of feel like we're waiting for the match to catch fire. Josh choosing to be the aggressor here as well. This isn't the greatest of layouts, but he has some issues and some work to do. Question whether the one top of the triangle area goes bottom left or right center. Right center when the other red's out of the way will definitely go. But does it go before? Oh, okay, cushion yellow. This opens up quite a lot. Yeah, opens up the other two reds I think one of them did squeeze past the yellow it doesn't go for him similar to the shot he missed in the previous frame actually you know I mentioned to you that uh, Christy Caulfield started like a trainer with 7-1 up on Luke Gilbert 10-1 he's just won yeah I'd be smiling too Christy lad that is some performance uh, against one of the players of the season. Against one of the players that's absolutely flying right now. It's an incredible result for Christy Caulfield. 10-1 in, well, about half an hour, give or take. That's an astonishing result. I think as well, he's... It was interesting listening to Connor Tracy talk about him yesterday. He said he's, he's doing a lot of things off the table to improve how he is on the table, I think it's huge for him. Yeah, highly talented player, we saw that in the Champions League. We've seen that since he's turned professional actually, We've, and those in the pool world have known that for a long time. He's capable of winning any event he ever enters, always has been regardless of his status in the game, whether he's uh, playing in the challenges or the professionals or anywhere else. It's the scoreline that makes it surprising, not the, not the result. Yeah, but it's it just it's just an example of you know what happens when you know talent and Christian's got so much talent. What happens when that flies in tandem with you know application and all the rest of it? It's it's an incredible mix. Yeah, I completely agree. I must stress that's not to say that it wasn't there before, but listening to his good friend Connor Trace on comms yesterday, it sounded like there'd been a concerted effort from. Christy this season. Oh, he's reaping the benefits. Yeah, and you have to, you know, all credit to him for that, but also, you know, credit to Ultimate Pool as well. They're giving players a platform to feel that it's worth the effort now. Whereas you can argue over the last 10, 15 years prior to Ultimate Pool, that, that wasn't really the case. You saw Ronan grimace as he missed his shot. It was a tricky one, but could have been a frame winner for him. The yellows all had pockets if that one had dropped, but he also knew there was a risk associated with it. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. That really is pinpoint to be on the one to top right to hold on the one for right centre. You see 
Ronan acknowledged it. Also a classy touch to move out of Josh's eye line. Ooh, Josh thought he'd missed that. He was ready to stomp back to his chair and it fell in. It's a nice shot though. Played at that pace, it, it, it won't go in if it absolutely missed. Yeah, no, it was all good. It's another very nice finish from Josh. There's been some tough layouts in the first five frames here, but... That was sharp. Yeah, he's pulled out a couple. Assuming I am right, is um, it is an interesting one, isn't it? But maybe... Oh, <laughs> what's it in off? <laughs> That's a big let off from, uh, from Josh Cade here. He gets, a he gets away one. The reason why I think he's so upset this goes in off is because he has the relief that it doesn't initially and then goes in. It's, it's like the elongated pain. Watch the sigh. There we go. <laughs> yeah, because what's happening there as well is that the, the instincts of the pool player analysing the table. OK, I've gone in off. That hurts. Is it going to cost me the frame immediately? And then he looks at the layout and he thinks, yeah, yeah, this is, this is a frame. And he's riding the momentum at the moment. He's just won three straight and he's thinking, get another one off the break and, you know, really start to build something. But he's just handed a really good chance here to Ronan. I think he can pop this red without disturbing the other one and then deal with the other one. No, he's having to use the other one. So this is the key shot. Yeah. Well worked out. He's played that so well. You yeah, know. I actually thought he could go clean back to back, but you could clearly see, it, see there he couldn't. So there was a little bit of work when when Ronan came to the table, but he could get to it straight away. He's played that really, really well. The, even the way that he's he's not worried about the other red. He's just played on the one at the top and just very, very clever. Yeah, and it came out perfectly for him as well. The red hasn't got in the way of the other red. If, if that red tracks across the table and other two rolls, all of a sudden he's got to work that positional shot a little bit more. yellows on the right side rail looks like he's can you go around the back of the bottom one that's what he's trying to do goes into it it wasn't what he was trying to do he's still okay but the good news is he's not on the cushion because he might be a little bit wary of the middle pocket here I think he's fine I think he's okay for the middle but is the corner in play I think it will throw wide. Yeah, no, he was okay. That's a good part. Join Luke Gilbert. <laughs> Ryan's still not happy with a the break. There, there will be there will be people watching this, and some of those people might be ultimate pool professionals who are watching Ronan break here, and he's been largely pretty successful with it, and he's not hit one good one no he's holds up his hand there and he's got a really good layout here i think the yellow by the two reds goes and therefore make the plan oh, he's short yeah, he's a touch Ooh. short but he does he's it just does got go there hasn't he yeah he just goes and he's okay and got one turn far enough down to be on it so yeah it's uh it was just a lovely layout from that break it's Might even suit him to be on this angle as well. Ronan. He took a long time on that shot. I'm not entirely sure what he was worried about. It looked maybe simpler than it was just by the amount of time he took over it. It's surprising to see him miss the part. Hasn't left much on though for Josh. He's had a touch here. 
I thought he was going to fluke the yellow top left actually when it originally yeah, so did I. Not, not to be but he has had the touch in terms of not leaving anything easy on and Josh may be forced into taking something tough on here does that red cut ultra thin it would be very thin he was lining up the pattern so I think this isn't more controllable than it looks yeah he was, oh, he was yeah. better on it than it, I thought he was yeah it's always so difficult to tell with those shots in particular with the with the camera angles so I take it back Ronan didn't have a touch it was uh, it was fine touch thin and Josh didn't quite get the control on the shot he was looking for so now needs to find a, a delicate shot that positional side of the shot here is the tricky part if he drops the one in the center and I think only the right hand one goes in the center will he be on the next ball yeah had to stun it so this one must go in the left center past the yellow it was eye of the needle stuff that pot there was not yeah. a lot of room there Absolutely love Josh's game. I think he's such a good player to watch. Yeah, we get to see a lot of brilliant performances from Josh. I mean, how many times in the Ultimate Ball era have we seen Josh put together you know, almost a flawless display on the TV table and then go and lose next round? But see the one run that we can look at is the world championship run where he ultimately came up short against Clayton Castaldi in the final you, every time you see him play and play well you think how's he not won a tournament yet yeah and that world championship was a funny one because he would have gone into that final as a huge favorite overwhelming favorite and the reason why it wasn't because of you know his record on paper but the semi-final we played against Stevie Dempsey is one of the highest quality matches you'll ever see. It was magnificent. And he beat Declan Brennan in the round before as it well, is, yeah. which was, you know, he, it wasn't on the TV table, but those that watched it said it was equally as high standard. Well, the match against Stevie was, was played in front of a, a big arena, big crowd. It's going to be okay here, that's fine. And big crowd and... I wasn't on commentary for that game, and I sat in the crowd and watched every ball. Yeah, it was <laughs> despite high the fact that we were on about fifty an hour shifts at the time. Yeah. It was just, it was engrossing. It was absorbing. It was such a brilliant game, and it went down to the absolute wire. And Josh came out against at time one of the form players in the world. Yeah, very well played. Oh, cue ball! Wow, huge. Huge oh, moment. Wow. I did think when you said that he's fine, I thought, well, I'd let you tell him that it was a nice, comfortable eight ball. It had a little bit on it, and obviously put all the focus on the pot. It wasn't an easy one. And, oh, did he hit the bump as well? Did that did that come off natural? Did it just catch the. I, it, on the replay there, it looked like the natural was going to hit the, hit the yellow. So Josh just took him away, took himself away for a second there, had a comfort break, came back, just to reset. He's upset, he's dry. Hit these well. I think this is the best strike of the match and control of the match. Not the best result. And the layout's not bad as well. One yellow. Doesn't have an opening red probably go yellows anyway it's only that one yellow above the right center and that doesn't look too tricky a double might even can make the case to get behind it drop it in the center but it's a little bit higher up than it looks
see how easy he thinks this yellow is. Might be able to just drop behind it. If he drops behind it, touch of angle, he'd be happy. But it wouldn't surprise me if he, he doesn't because it is just that little bit higher than it looks. Eight ball as well doesn't go to its natural pocket. I think that's part of the thinking here. As you can see there, eight ball doesn't go top right, so he didn't want to leave these yellows in the bottom end of the table as last ball. angle the wrong way here. Means he's a touch thinner on this one than he wanted to be. A thin clip, cue ball into the red, hold the white. He won't be happy. He won't be happy. Problem is, if he drops this in or takes this long, the cue ball's going, naturally going to the wrong area of the table. So he's got to work the cue ball here to get on the eight ball. Well, tried to pot it on the straight side of the pocket to hold the cue ball. You can see there, if he makes that centre pocket, the cue ball goes another couple of turns to the left and he's not on the eight ball. Or he's very close to the eight ball. So that was the, kind of the reason for the miss. Josh will be happy enough with the plant at the top of the table, but the way he played that one tells us he doesn't want to be playing the plant at the bottom of the table, which means he's going to have to take the one at the bottom, go up the table to come back down the table. In fact, he, because of that, he didn't play on the plant. He was using the, the one nearest the pocket. He was trying to get on it thin so that he was going to come back down the table and deal with all those problems in, in consecutive order. But he's a touch lower than he wanted to be. He could have done with being about another foot higher. Played it nicely. Played it nicely to a point. He's come too straight. Last one he was a few rolls short, this time he's a few rolls too far. So he's gonna have to just back himself to get in line and make an awkward red to top left from the cushion. Might even screw into the yellow here to try and get the cue ball a little bit higher up the table. He needs to be fairly straight in on the red to top left. If he comes back to where he is now, it's gonna be tough to hold to play on the last one. And you can see there he's got no angle just forced it enough it means he's just straight enough Smooth from Josh. Good response to the in-off on the 
previous frame. And we're all square once again. If I was a betting man, and I'm not, I've heard some stories of some of the boys here have had a good week on the on the horses at Cheltenham and it honestly gives me palpitations just thinking about it. But if I was a betting man, Carl Sutton I think is the smart money this weekend. He looks razor sharp. Absolutely. 10-1 in his opening round against Amin, Amin Beneath and then 10-7 against Connor Tracy. But we spoke to Connor about that match and Connor said that yeah, I think he took all but one of his chances. He said Carl played incredibly well. 10-7, high quality match. So it just shows you how well Carl is playing. We're also just sliding under the radar a touch, which I think he'll be quite happy with actually. And he's actually just gone one frame away from victory over Matty Challen, who's had a good run through a couple of rounds himself. layout for Josh he's going to try and find it this looks difficult to make this off the red that shot didn't look on red looked too low and I think maybe he felt that himself, he's played a I mean he did look to see what would he have at the bottom of the table but I, I actually don't think he thought he could make that I think that was maybe a containing shot Do you remember when Chris Melling was was it 5-3 or 6-3 down? 5-3. 5-3 down to Ian Alley, um, not that long ago. Uh, I think it was 3-3 three, three here. Yeah. yeah. Just one. <laughs> Ten six. Cheers. Yeah, he'll play Christy Caulfield in the next round. Oh, <laughs> that is a juicy one. It really is. That is juicy. Because Christy is absolutely flying, if you didn't catch us earlier. He won 10-1 against uh, Luke Good Gilbert, Gilbert. Yeah. and he did that in about 30 minutes, which is astonishing really. Luke, one of the form players in the world right now. Yeah, that, uh, yeah certainly an eye-catching match in the winner's qualification. There's the cue ball. No, he's not good.
brilliant recovery pot and gets the cue ball. Previous positional shot. Very poor from Josh. Good recovery. It's not absolutely over in terms of recovery. Hard to tell his exact angle here. May have to play a little cannon. Yeah, just went for that delicate cannon. Tried to judge it and come off the red, be on the one at the bottom or be on the yellow in the open. And he's ended up on neither. And this all still stems back to the shot two ago, not the one he's just played. Although he'll be disappointed because he would have felt that was a chance to recover it. dig out great shots, doesn't he? Another tricky eight ball. This time there shouldn't be any issues with the the in off, just going to make the pot natural up and down the middle of the table and in it goes that's excellent from Josh he was under pressure, put himself in trouble midway through that chance and then dug himself out oh, not, a, not again that's what he's thinking right now he'll be raging inside yeah previous one you know we talk about the the racks the previous one I think Josh might have felt that the rack wasn't great he can't have any complaints here I mean he he hit the front ball half ball complete miss hit and that is why we have this layout We've had one match on the TV table this week that's come down to the the match clock, as in it didn't finish. A couple yesterday that went a little bit closer. For the last four matches, though, yesterday, as we see Dylan Leary there watching on after a very good victory for himself. Um, but the point I was making, the last four matches were, were the sort of standard races to seven, 50 minutes that we see at the Pro Series. So, you know, we do see the occasional match not finish when we have those, but... From the races to 10, we didn't have anything other than the Luke Gilbert one, which he would have won if he hadn't have missed a simple eight ball with about five minutes to go. In the end, he finished on nine, didn't quite get to the 10 mark. This one, I don't think, has got too much chance to get there. If it continues on the same pattern and it continues to be tight, we're not going to get to the 10. 20 minutes left in this one which is a long time in ultimate pool terms. But Josh needs five, Ronan needs six, and we've got a tight tactical frame here.
fan to Josh for these though. Because of the way the balls have been breaking, and that might be a little bit too generous because there's been some bad breaks as well. But let's go with because of the layouts of the balls. Yeah. The level of the actual match has been really high. You know, both Ronan and Josh having to work so hard to find these finishes. It's been superb. Yeah, it's been entertaining. It's just been a different sort of entertainment, hasn't it? it certainly has. It's been probably the scrappiest frame of the match so far, but double from Ronan gives him the opportunity here. Probably going to need another double. Straight's not great. Needs an angle just to come across the table. I think he's got just enough, to be honest. Yeah, perfect, actually. In fact... Now he can control where he wants to be on the double. Might have the natural angle here just to roll into the red, which leaves him on the double. Depends on where he wants to be, whether he tries to play that or try and avoid it. He could have played into the eight ball, of course, but Ronan's not that sort of player. He'd rather have the control of the double than he would try and play a cannon and have to be on a moving ball. He's nowhere near on the double. That straightened up a lot more than he was expecting. It 
It's a surprise to see a, a top player not hit a jaw on a double. should cost him the frame and allow Josh to separate. I think this will be the first time that Josh gets himself two in front. See, Rhino did win the first two frames of the match, but mainly Josh since then. Remember that one of the other frames that Ronan's won since 2-0 has been a in off the eight ball for Josh Kane. So, been a tough match for the former world champion. Simple eight ball then for that two frame advantage. Three and a half minutes away from the final 10 and 15 seconds a shot as well. Very slow going in this one. And that match will be on the TV table. That'll be a couple of matches time. We know next up it's Scott Gillespie and Carl Morris match after that it will be Craig Waddingham versus either Jaden or Declan obviously currently 8-5 to Declan <coughs> yeah, another result that we didn't reference actually that we didn't see on the score because it was a match result David McNamara has completed victory 10-6 over Morgan McGuinness so it sends Morgan to the loser's side. Watch out for Morgan this year, first year professional. I really do think he's going to have a deep run somewhere and it could still be this weekend of course. He could come back through the, the loser's side. He's been flying up in Scotland and we know the strength and depth in Scotland is very high. story of the match I know that Ronan did have one first visit that got away from him but it's tended to be a lot more of Josh trying to make the running I feel like he I mean it's another tough layout it's another awkward kind of looking frame kind of reference the point that you made previously Stephen but it always seems to be Josh is the one that wants to try and make it happen and by and large he's been able to do that not always with clean kills Close to a time foul, but just in time. And it ultimately wasn't a successful shot, but also these reds are not good. As we're going to tick into the final 10 minutes in this frame, it feels a big one. Three frames in the final 10 to be behind is a tough road back, especially with the pace of this match has gone along at. Because of the, the, ways the way the balls have split, and therefore you feel this is a very big frame for Ronan McCarthy. Oh, you saw, that was a good hit from Josh, but he's staring at the yellow, begging for it to reach the cushion, so he doesn't give away the cue ball in hand just gets there now we 
go. 15 seconds a shot. Massive favourite, six five, and it is right up in the air. Makes it a big visit. Stuff once again from Josh, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing's been easy. He's worked and he's going to take out another one. One's another frame. Yes, it's not a clean kill, it's not in one visit, but he's grinding. Josh Kane to break. Leading by seven frames. Kane on the break, then 7 4 up. He can break the back of the match here. going to be he's going to make a ball there we go nice split as well this Ronan will be fearing the worst to get the one at the top of the table out of the way. He doesn't want to be straight, and that's nice. Easier to get on the eight ball from the ones at the bottom than it is the one at the top. Pretty natural from here, really. Ooh. Wow, don't miss the pot, though. Ooh, well. That's a major surprise. Felt like it wins this clear, makes this clearance. I feel like the match is over. And well, probably the worst error he's made in the whole match, in all honesty. It's going to give Ronan just a touch of hope here. Should be the frame then, cube in hand now for Ronan. Declan Brennan has got the job done over Jaden Billingham. The youngster drops down into the loser's side to run the gauntlet.
Jones has got to get a move on. He's yeah. probably going to need to win the next two frames, you'd say. 7-5. Might have time for a third. He needs a ball. Needs a ball. He's not going to get one. No golden breaks in play. So with only four minutes on the clock here and two behind, desperate need of a ball. Changes dynamic from a Monday night where you can maybe win three frames in a couple of minutes depending on just can't, golden yeah. breaks. You just can't have that in without those in play. And it's another tricky layout. And well, Josh has been pretty consistent at taking these chances on question whether it's the right thing to do on this occasion I think you'll be thinking if I win this frame I'll win the match so in that sense I get the aggression my thinking here is though make it really awkward and run the match down in this frame if he if he takes this on and gets you know three quarters of the way through it pots the open reds and he doesn't find the finish and I, don't get me wrong, I think in normal play, I think the finish is the right way to go. He's got red to right centre and it's a perfect breakout ball. But if it doesn't work out for him, he's going to leave enough time for Ronan to counter. Timeout. It's going to be a timeout here just to check that wasn't a time foul. It was very, very tight. But my point being, if, if, he, uh, if he doesn't get out of here, Ronan would have enough time to counter and it would leave about a minute on the clock for a reverse clearance. So... That's the reason I'm saying I don't know whether he, it's worth the risk in going for it when it was such a tricky layout. Make it really awkward. Yeah, I, I, th I think Josh was okay for this one. He's sort of had a little look around a couple of other people in the arena. So that was okay, wasn't it? It was Ab tight. <laughs> it was, was tight. Absolutely the right thing for the ref to check. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, the important thing to check. These things must be right. If you're not sure, don't commit. I go on gut feel a lot in these situations and normally I'm, I'm about 50-50 on getting it right so don't read too much into this well, but my, no. gut, my gut feel I, I won't actually that, that <laughs> makes me trust you less my gut feel here was that he was just okay yeah. I can tell you Josh is about to get some good news he was fine yeah definitely close enough to check though that's, uh, that's for sure the next shot is key the good news when he plays the breakout, he's, he's not going to miss the pot. So he can play the next shot. If it doesn't come out, he can still tie things up and slow it down. He doesn't have to continue going. And it's come out okay. It's yeah, come out better than that. This. He'll take this. This is, this, is the, this is the match, essentially, at assuming, this stage. Yeah, assuming that red does go to bottom right, and I think it does, then, yeah, it's absolutely the match and justified his decision in, in going. Oh, you've seen better shots played there, though. Little bit of a pain for him. Yeah, he's okay. Slid it off in here, jaw. was tight the fact that he looked at it two or three times and he couldn't get straight in on it actually made that a tricky shot and well Ronan could make this a one minute last frame potentially essentially he's got to get out here and he's got to get out here in about a minute and he should he should leave about a minute 15 actually Ronan's absolutely flying and I tell you what he's this is the quickest I've ever seen the old man move and he, he's he's whipping through these gonna have plenty of time Love this. Yeah, he's putting time back into the match. He's going to have a real opportunity. 120 for the final frame for Ronan McCarthy to force a six red shootout. Dry break makes things nervy. He's got a ball. And Ronan was two steps to the table. <laughs> <laughs> that will end the match, though. Yeah. He's going to call his extension and he's got an easy opener. So that will be. That will be that. Fascinating match, though. I think Completely different style to what we've seen throughout the weekend and probably a different style to what either 
Josh or Ronan will play again this weekend. It's just been the balls dictate sometimes. They do. But it's still been fascinating. Some huge moments in it. Some real quality as well. I wonder what the sort of reaction from both players is. I mean, we'll hear from the winner, which will be Josh. But I have a suspicion that he may, you know, may prove me wrong. But I have a suspicion he'll feel like he hasn't played particularly well and all the rest of it. But actually, I think the level of this match has been really high. It's just been a bit of a grinder. Both players just had to find it. And that's that. Josh King can run things out. That is the match done. Well played to the killer. Ronan McCarthy shakes his hand. A high quality match as the clock rings out to signal its conclusion. Josh Kane over the line.